explain to you again what does this mean. Uh, basically, what it means is when a process is being brought into, okay, brought into in order for it to be processed, which is inside the running state here, okay. Okay, so it goes inside the, uh, from new, new is inside your hard disk, the process is new, it's inside your hard disk, and it goes inside the ready state, ready is in your RAM, your memory, and the running is inside your CPU processor, okay. So any process which needs to be run by the processor needs to be inside the memory. Where is the new state? The new state is the whereby the process is inside your hard disk okay so it's admitted inside the memory next it is brought into the uh, running state using a scheduler dispatch a scheduler dispatch is a type of uh, not hardware but a written program which is which brings in the processors from the ready from the memory into the processor here the cpu here okay each processor will have each process will have a given time for it to be processed once the process is uh, completed then it will be terminated if the process is not completed but there is another process which needs to come in then the process will be interrupted will be stopped uh, for a while and will be brought into the ready state once again for example if the process needs to uh, you see uh, it needs to wait for some input output then it will go inside the waiting state which is also inside the uh, memory once it's uh, it's uh, input output has been completed it goes back inside the memory which is also here and then it will be uh, dispatched again inside the processor or inside the running state okay so these are the five states of a particular process each process has something which is called a PCB. A PCB is a unique ID given to all process. Okay, a pro uh, it's a unique ID, a unique description given to all process. Okay, so each process has a PCB. What are the items inside a PCB? Well, these are the items inside PCB. Okay, what is the current state? What is the counter for the particular program? Because you have to remember, a process is actually a running of a program. And inside this program, there are line of codes. So maybe the process has run, has, uh, has been executed, but it's only executing up to line number 10, 20, 13. So that is the counter. So that is the counter. So it will indicate this counter so the operating system knows if this process is now Dispatch back again to the processor. You will know from where it, need, it needs to be. Uh, it needs to begin. Okay. Uh, CPU registers. What are the registers involved in that particular process? And what is the prior, uh, scheduling information? Where is this process? Is it in the memory or CPU? And the memory management information. Uh, where in the memory is this particular process located? and how much time is inside the accounting information and what are the input outputs for that particular process so each process will have a, will have all this inside this pcb all right so this is another form whereby a process switches from one process to another okay one process to another process so each process when it switches from one process to another process it's being interrupted. What does interrupt mean? Interrupt means that once a process is running, it will be interrupted. Example here, process zero is running, but at a certain point of time, it's interrupted here. So when it is interrupted, the process is now sent back to the, process zero is sent back to the memory and process one is now executing. And once it's uh, finished executing, process zero will continue back from where it's uh, it left off okay so between a process to a process the cpu interrupts one process okay and continues with the other process all right 
Next, we go in into the point of threads. What are threads? Okay. So a thread means the same process. Okay. It's running from the. Uh, it, it's a sub process which is running from the same particular process. Okay. So the threads will be different from the process. However, it's an example. Uh, give you an example like this. When you open Microsoft Word, now that is one particular process. When you open document one, document two, three, four, five, six, now that each of these uh, sub process documents are called a thread. So a thread is a single line under a particular process. If a thread finishes execution, then the process is still in execution. However, if you shut down the process, if the process finishes, then all the threads under the process will be automatically shut down. Okay. So you can imagine like this. Uh, Microsoft Word is a process. Document 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is all the threads. So if we shut down or we close or we exit from thread number 1, the process is still there. However, there is no particular threads running. But if we have uh, another example, if we have uh, thread 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, document 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and if you close or you will shut down the process Microsoft Word is to theory, then all the threads under the particular process is now uh, shut down as well. Right. <clears throat> Next, we go into the process scheduling. Okay. So in order for the process to be scheduled, okay, scheduled, that means now you have to imagine the processes are now inside the memory waiting to be brought into the processor waiting to be brought into the processor always remember the cpu can only take in one particular process at any one given time there can only be one process so the remaining process which needs to enter the cpu will reside inside your memory inside your ram so inside your ram there is a scheduler so this scheduler or what we say is a job queue will queue all the process which needs to be brought in inside the CPU. Okay, scheduling queue. All right. But then you might you might ask, uh, how is it possible when I do my work, I listen, I do my work, Microsoft Word, one process, I listen to YouTube, another process. How is it possible? Whereby we can say the CPU can only run one process, but I'm able to <clears throat> listen to two. Well, the answer is very simple because the CPU runs at a very, very high speed and it has so many buffers so the sound that you hear from the youtube comes from a buffer okay it is not coming from the memory however if you change song well the the cpu does that for you but the time is so fast that it splits or it switches between process very very fast okay so this ready queue is inside your memory so inside the ready queue okay between the ready queue to cpu this this diagram here okay this this whole thing here is inside the ready queue okay, inside the ready queue. so there is inside the ready queue there will be a, a queue okay a, di a, a scheduler which keeps track of all the processes which needs to go in to the cpu because some process cannot begin until when the input happens. Some process needs some time. Okay, that means it only executes at a certain point of time. Some process it will break into another process. That's why you have here fork a child. Fork a child means the process is breaking into two sub process. Okay, An example of a process is which is waiting for a uh, input output queue is for example. Uh, if you go to the uh, checkout counter in the supermarket, okay, where you check out your, uh, your your items at the cashier, that PC, that counter machine at the counter is actually in a ready mode. The system or the process is waiting for an uh, for an input to happen. Only then, okay, only then, the price can be displayed on the screen, okay. Else, the process is now just in the waiting queue, okay, just waiting for an input to happen because 
if the input happens, only then the process can begin its process. Okay. If the process does not get an input from the barcode, then the process will not uh, begin. Next, we also have the time. How long can the process be inside the ready queue? Okay, that is why you see your PC after a certain period of time, even if your PC is running uh, on YouTube, automatically it switches to a screen saver. Automatically, it, your screen disappears. So that is whereby the process, the the, uh, the ready queue has a time slice inside the memory. It detects after a certain period of time if there is no more process coming in, if there is no movement from the input output, then it shuts down. Oh, no, sorry, it does not shut down. It goes in the standby mode and the monitor off. Okay, so those are time slice expired. Okay, so inside the scheduler, there are a few types of schedulers, sub schedulers as well. There is a, something called the short term scheduler and the long term scheduler. And each process is broken down into two types of process. Okay, let's con concentrate on this. Each process inside the ready queue, okay, ready to dalam memory, eh? okay, there are two types of process. One is what we say as the input output bound process, and another one is what we say as the CPU bound process. An input output bound process is whereby the process spends more time doing input output rather than computational computation. Example, like in the supermarket, the process is only doing getting an input from the barcode reader and displaying. So there is very little minimum or there is very minimal CPU process. It's only receiving inputs from the barcode reader and display. Okay, the display is very, very fast. Okay, so but most of its process are on the input from the barcode reader. So those are examples of input bound process. Another example is when you go into the toll gate, RFID, touch and go. Those are input output bound process because they are only waiting for an input to happen. Only then the process begins. Okay. All right. A CPU bound process spends more time doing computation and a very short time, a very long long cpu bus and what we say is the opposite of input bound okay cpu bus means or cpu bus means that means the processing time inside the cpu uh, cpu bound process is whereby when you are doing a multimedia you are doing uh, rendering <clears throat> you are rendering your movie okay that means you are joining in all your movie sections so that is what we say it's a cpu bound process because the cpu is working around the clock to finish up the video okay so that's why you need a high speed cpu to work on this because it's doing a lot of jobs in order for to render the movie to join in the movie okay to join in all the music so that is a lot of cpu work so you need <coughs> a good cpu so that process is known as a cpu bound process so in both of these processes are inside the uh, ready queue Inside the, inside the dispatch, inside the ready queue. So, the operating system needs to choose which process goes in and out, in and out of the CPU. If the process is, uh, if the CPU chooses a CPU bound process, then the process will take a long time. The processor will always be uh, busy. That means it will never execute other other processes because it's now focusing only on cpu bound if the uh, operating system chooses a uh, input output bound process then all the computational all the rendering process images or whatever not will not be processed will be processed but at a later stage so that's why the operating system needs to choose needs to select between what we say as the short term oh, sorry uh, between uh, uh, the operating system needs to choose an EPU, uh, CPU bound process or a input output bound process. Okay, so this there are two types of scheduler. Okay, there's two types of scheduler. 
One is called the short-term scheduler and one is called the long-term scheduler. Okay. So the short-term scheduler works as if, okay, works to bring in all the processes at a very short period of time. That means every one, two seconds, one, two seconds, they are about process muscle. And it will bring in any process, either import output or the CPU box. However, the long-term scheduler works differently. The long-term scheduler chooses long or, or what we say as a long time process. Process, process, yang panjang. So you will choose that. Okay. So if both of these scheduler works side by side, dalam ready, uh, dalam uh, memory. So the operating system will choose either a short term or a long term in order to bring in the uh, process which is uh, need, which needs to be processed by the CPU. So the long-term scheduler is also to control degree of multi-programming. Multi-programming means uh, your PC. Uh, it means uh, it can run multiple programs at one given time. Okay, at one given time. So the CPU scheduler, which is either the long-term scheduler or the short-term scheduler or the long-term scheduler, maintains this degree of multi-programming. That means the number of process being processed in the CPU is the same. That means are they short term or the long term? Are they short term or the long term? Okay. And it's also uh, going to process in, in, uh, input output or CPU uh, CPU one process. Okay. It's only, it's replicating between both. Okay. It's changing between both. Sekejap dia akan buat input output. Sekejap dia akan buat CPU one process. All right. A medium term scheduler pula, just swapping. That means, okay, it will remove the process from the memory and execute it. Or remove the process from memory, store on the disk and bring it back from the disk to continue executing. This is what we say as swapping. Okay, swapping ni macam you buat control alternate delete, you end task, you buat process lain. Okay, this is what we mean as medium term scheduler. A medium term scheduler means, okay, if the process is running at a very uh, long time, then uh, the operating system will stop that particular process and swap it with another process. Okay, they are going to remove the process. Okay, process to the lama sangat tunggu dalam uh, CPU, oh, sorry, memory, so they can keluarkan and terus masuk dalam, uh, terus and bring it back from the disk to continue executing. Okay, why does it need to be stored back in the uh, disk? Because if it's too long waiting, so it will shut down one particular process, letak dalam, uh, apa namanya, hard disk, and bring whatever new process back into execution. Okay. Uh, a, a medium term scheduler is like what I said, is something like swapping or we do uh, in operating system, we do switching. Meaning to say, you switch the program. You interrupt the program, you just change the screen. Okay. Like now I'm doing uh, PowerPoint. So I can, with uh, uh, the, there's a special command where I can switch this process to another particular process. So I take it out and I switch it to another program. All right. Multitasking in mobile system. Okay. Mobile system also works the same as the uh, input, sorry, the operating system. Okay. The operating system in the mobile system works almost the same, but it has two different kinds of program. One is the foreground and one is the background. Okay. The foreground is what you see on your mobile phone whatever apps you see on the user interface on the front screen but the background process is the memory the time and all those those are what we say is the background process so again <coughs> okay uh, again in the same concept color foreground and background so there is a limitation of how much foreground process and how much background process can be uh, used at one single point of time because if the Android or if the iOS is focusing more on program, then background process takkan jalan. Kalau dia buat background process saja, your program process takkan jalan. Okay, it needs to control which program uh, comes in and go out. Okay, so context switch is almost similar like what I said is now. Uh, medium term scheduler. Okay. Now, operations on processors. So in order for you to, in order for the operating system to run a particular process, 
first the process must be created okay then brought into the memory then brought into the cpu once it's finished it goes into termination and so on so for each particular process it goes through the same process you create the process you put it inside your memory you run the process inside your cpu once it's done you terminate it and store it back inside your uh namanya, your hard disk so each parent process creates a child a child process is like what i told you just now is a fork sorry it's a thread so parent process microsoft word child process is document one okay uh, and then so you each process has a process id okay so this is how uh, the fork system looks like okay this is the uh, these are all the programming codes you need to know okay you need to know lah tapi ini kalau you buat programming lah okay uh, let's see what else you need to know okay let's see this 3.4 in order for a process to talk to another process you will talk using something which is called inter-process communication process with a system may be independent or cooperating independent mean a process run by itself cooperating means this process needs to wait for another process for it to uh, complete or for it to share data contohnya macam uh, let's say you are running uh, okay let's say you uh, let's go back to the supermarket example okay the process okay of getting the input from the barcode reader the parcel check in a database uh, checking a database and uh, the file is displayed so the dual process kat sini the input datang daripada barcode reader dapat barcode tu that that barcode will be passed as the input to another process so the other process they can check in a database berapa harga dia and display on the screen so how these processes talk to each other is they use something which is called uh inter-process communication so they are cooperating between one another why do they cooperate within another one another because they want to share information they want to speed up computation uh, they want is much more convenient that means one process they can buat uh, input base they can pass to another process now this process will do the searching the database and so on and so on so forth okay so there are two models of uh, interprocess communication shared memory that means both of this process uses the same memory sama juga macam uh, what is it microsoft word and document 1 2 3 4 all these processes microsoft word document 1 2 3 ialah process cuma document 1 2 3 is a process inside a process but all of these processes share the same memory location that is why you can copy paste from one document to another document to another document okay because all of them are sharing the same information sorry same memory uh, location okay so this is how it looks like so between the process you have a shared location here okay so these two processes are actually the same this is the main process this is a document one but both are sharing the same location here if you have document three uh, or, or document two you have it here and the shared memory size will increase that means process ni pun boleh access process b and c boleh access in microsoft uh, word they share the same because microsoft word ni datang kepada uh, microsoft office kan so all of this if you if you open excel so Excel also will share the same memory because it all comes from the same process lah kata. Okay, because we need about Microsoft Office. So that is why you can share, uh, sorry, you can copy from Excel sekejap, paste to PowerPoint, paste to Word. Okay, because all of them are having the shared memory. In cooperative, uh, pro in cooperating processes, there are also some process which is independent independent process cannot affect or be affected by the execution of another process that means it's independent contoh process yang independent your virus sorry your virus is not a uh, virus scanner is not an independent process your time 
Okay, time is independent because it does not care. You run lah Microsoft Word ke, Excel ke, PowerPoint ke, tapi I will still do my uh, time. Okay, dalam operating system. Or your antivirus, betul lah, antivirus program. It is not worried about any process. They can run continuously. Okay, they can run continuously. Uh, your screen saver program, they can run continuously. They have the time, tapi it's not worried about any other process. Kalau cooperating process is affected, that means kalau you open Word and you open PowerPoint, they are going to affect within one another because it both shares the same, uh, what do you say, same memory allocation. Okay, so these are some of the advantages of having cooperation process, and information sharing, speed up, and much more convenient. All right. So other than that, uh, yang lain semua, okay. Uh, okay, this uh, consumer problem ni, okay, you can read it on your own. This is very much easy, nothing much here. And yep, okay. So we are almost at the end of this uh, chapter. Direct communication, buffering. Okay, all right. Uh, this is, okay, yang bawah ni, you can read it on your own. It's nothing much, okay, it's all talking about the same process. Either. All right. So again, we have a very short class today. We will stop now. Uh, you have any questions for me? You not tanya soalan ke? Okay. So what we have learned so far in this chapter is about process. So you need to understand what is a process first. You tahu definition of a process. Yang keduanya, you need to understand what is a job, what is a batch system, time check system. All right. This is very important. And you have to understand what are the states of each process. So you have to remember these five states. And you have to remember the feature, sorry, the items inside a process control block. What is a process control block? You have to know. So what are the items inside a process control block? Selalu bertanya. And you have to also imagine or you have to also understand where is each of the state? Di mana location? If you say, uh, let's say a process is in the ready state. So where is it? So it's inside the memory. If a process is inside the running state, where is it? It's inside the uh, CPU. Okay. Uh, you have to understand what is a thread. Give me examples of a thread. What is a scheduler? Okay. Scheduler is a, a program inside the ready queue. Hmm. Why is a scheduler important? Because it selects which process to be brought in into the uh, CPU. And you also have to understand, you have to know what are the types of process. So, kita ada input, output one pro, input, input one process and output one process. And we have two types of scheduler. One is the short term and one is the long term. So, kalau short term, dia bawa process-process yang CPU sahaja. Kalau long term, dia akan choose process yang input output. Okay, long term is very important to maintain degree of multi-programming. That means it has to make sure that each process in the CPU is not taking so much time. So they can maintain. Okay. And a medium term scheduler, uh, sorry, medium term scheduling sama juga macam context switch whereby it swaps the old process and puts in a new process. Okay. Swaps a new uh, old process and brings in a new process. All right. How does the uh, process talk to among uh, each other. Well, they use something which is called the IPC, which is the in, uh, inter-process communication. How does the inter-process communication work? They would share memory between processes. Why is the inter-process communication uh, good? Because it shares information, it speeds up and is much more convenient. Okay? The lining uh, is nothing much. You can just Finish up reading on your own. Okay. <coughs> All right. Any questions so far? No, sir. Okay. All right. So I leave you all again early today.